water leaks. These cause damage to property and items which are expensive to repair and replace. So we're going to learn how to automate leak detection in this video, which is kindly sponsored by Danfoss Climate Solutions. You can prevent water leaks by including Danfoss's new Eco Brass Solenoid Valves for leak detection. They're safe for drinking water and easy to install. So check out the link in the video description to learn more and see the specifications for the entire range. Water leaks occur due to old or damaged pipes and fittings, badly installed systems, water hammer, and also things such as frost, which cause the water inside to expand, and this causes the pipe to burst. Leaks can be hard to spot at first, until puddles of water are noticed, and by then ceilings and walls start to collapse. Wooden floors will start to swell up, and our electronic goods will be destroyed. After this, the surfaces will be discolored, mold will develop, and the property will require expensive repairs. If a leak occurs in an apartment block, it can impact every property below it. Currently, it relies on someone noticing a leak and then knowing where and how to manually shut the water off. So, we need a way to automate this to protect the property and assets within them. To do this, we need two parts a way to detect the leak and a way to cut the water supply to stop the leak. There are two main ways to detect a water leak, either data comparison for a flow meter or physical detection using a sensor. If we measure the flow rate through a pipe, we can compare this to previous patterns to identify a potential leak. We could apply this to an entire home or individual appliances like washing machines. But let's consider a simple application such as a single toilet. The flow rate should be zero most of the time until someone flushes the toilet. And then we get around six liters flowing in a short burst of time. Once the toilet is filled, a ball valve shuts off the supply, and so the flow rate is zero again. But if there is a leak, then the flow rate will not be zero. It will have a small but constant minimum flow rate through the meter. We will look at how to measure the flow rate in just a moment. We could also manually check a water meter to spot water leaks, either by recording and comparing the consumption value over periods of time when the property is empty, or we can also see the small dial is constantly turning on the mechanical meter. There are many ways to measure the flow rate of water, but the two most common methods are mechanical and ultrasonic. Mechanical flow meters basically use a small internal impeller or paddle wheel, which rotates as water passes through it. The meter measures the rotational speed of the impeller. The volume of water flowing is proportional to the rotational speed of the impeller. A sensor, which is usually magnetic or optical, detects the blade tip moving past, and this closes a reed switch, which causes a pulse of electricity. The number of pulses and the frequency in which they occur is used to calculate the flow rate through the meter. Another method is to use an ultrasonic meter. Ultrasonic flow meters can usually be clamped onto an existing pipe to measure the flow rate. Two ultrasonic signals are emitted into the pipe. One travels downstream with the water, the other travels upstream against the water. When no water is flowing, the upstream and downstream signals take the same amount of time to send and receive. But when water is flowing, the downstream signal is faster than the upstream signal. It's very similar to a boat crossing a river. It is much easier and faster for a boat to travel with the current of water than against it. With a ultrasonic flow meter, we measure these signal times and compare them to determine the velocity of the water. The velocity and the cross-sectional area of the pipe are then used to calculate the volume flow rate. To detect the presence of water, we can use a simple probe sensor. This basically has two stainless steel probes located at floor level. Each is connected to the positive and negative of a power supply. When water passes across the two probes, the circuit is complete and a small electrical current is able to flow between the probes. There are other versions which have conductive tracks which are separated from each other. Ordinarily, no current can flow between these because the circuit is broken. 
However, when water flows over the sensor, the water allows an electrical current to flow between the tracks and complete the circuit. The signal from these sensors flows to a controller, which usually activates an alarm and sends a signal to the solenoid valve to shut the water supply off. We will see how these work in just a moment. Another common method is to use a leak detection cable. There are many different designs, but the basic principle is that some conductive wires are twisted along the wire with a small voltage applied to the ends. When water comes into contact with the cable, it causes a short circuit and triggers an alarm. These are usually located in areas where leaks are likely to occur, such as underneath the kitchen sink. To stop a leak automatically, we need a solenoid valve, a controller, and a sensor. When the water sensor detects water is present, the circuit completes and energizes a relay. This causes the arm to close and power the solenoid valve, causing it to close and shut the water off. The solenoid valve is a fairly simple device. If we look at this example, we have an inlet and an outlet for the water to flow through. Inside, we find a diaphragm and a valve seat which is attached. This can move up and down to open or close the valve. This is attached to a piston which is held by a spring. This holds the valve open for normal use. Surrounding the piston on the outside of the valve is a solenoid, which is basically a coil of wire. When a current passes through this, it creates a magnetic field. This magnetic field pulls on the piston causing it to move downwards and close the valve to shut the water off. So, when a leak is detected, the relay is activated and this causes the solenoid valve to energize and shut the water off. We have covered solenoid valves and relays in our previous videos. I'll leave a link in the video description down below for you. Do check those out. Check out one of the videos on screen now to continue learning about engineering and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and theengineeringmindset.com.